Hello, welcome to Shad Life, where I have over 40 years of BMX and mountain biking experience. Today we're going to continue the bike setup series, and we're going to talk about what I call the controls. So we talked about the cockpit. Well, every cockpit has controls. So those controls are going to include the yoke. Okay, let's call them handlebars. And then we have brakes, shift levers, got the dropper lever over there, another brake. Um, we've got a couple of things going on here. We've got like how you want your controls set up versus, you know, handlebar width and things like that. Rise, all of that. I talked a bit about rise, so I'm not going to get a big bit into that because that's more to do with the other sizing stuff that I talked about, about reach and effective top tube, all of that. But we're going to talk more about bar width and setting up your controls properly. Okay, more often than not, when you buy a bike, this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see the brake lever all the way against the grip and the shift lever there. You'll sometimes even see the shift lever inside of the brake lever, right? So this is what I don't like, because I look at here, like this is where my hand's gonna go. And right away, when I put my hand here, this lever is against my index finger and I don't ride with my index finger on the lever because then I'm going to hit a bump and accidentally shift and stuff. I want full hand on grips and full control and if I'm jumping or needing to do this I don't want to be bumping into all this. Now if I go to reach my brake lever look at where my finger is on the brake lever. Right? That's this little knob there isn't where you want your finger. You want your finger right there for one finger braking with good disc brakes hydraulics especially we only need one finger and i've actually found that i only need one finger for um mechanical brakes if you find yourself using two fingers on your brakes um you probably want to have your brakes tuned or get a, a better brake where you don't have to do this to slow down you should be able to just one finger brake easily brake right um, if you're two finger braking, you lose some control because then, if you look, I've only got these two fingers holding on to the grip, and I don't have a very uh, strong grip. And then another thing is that reach adjustment to the lever. And there is a dial, I don't, yeah, this one has it right there. Some of them have dials, whatever. But sometimes the levers will be way out here and have the farthest reach, which means I have to literally rotate my hand to reach the lever, things like that. Another thing you'll notice is this lever is up quite a way. So I basically position this in all the positions I don't like to kind of show you how you want to set this stuff up. Um, I did a video on this a long time ago, but I'm kind of uh, going through it again when I talk about bike setup. So... Um, when you're at a shop and you buy a new bike or you get a bike from someone or even just ride a bike, like even a rental or something, I've actually rented bikes and the first thing I do is grab the, an Allen wrench and go and set the bars how I want, where I want the brake levers and everything like that. You can do that. You don't have to, or ask them to adjust that stuff for you to your liking. They will do it because you want the bike to be how you want it. All right. So now I'm going to tweak these things how I like them and explain why I do that. Okay, let's take another look. Notice this space here. Um, notice my shifters are on the outside of my brake lever clamp. You don't always have this option, and if you've seen videos on my Rustler, the uh, shifters are actually mounted to the brake lever. Um, on the XTs, you have the... Uh, Ability to slide it and adjust it where you want which is really nice so I don't mind that system some bikes actually have it as one built unit and you don't have that option so it makes it a little more challenging but for the most part you want to slide your brake in this way and if your shifters are on the inside you probably want to move them to the outside if you have that option if that's an option you can choose um, the reason for that is if I had these on the inside these levers would be still um, eclipsing my grip quite a bit. You notice that eclipses a little bit, 
it's not bad and you know maybe I might move it a little more who knows but this is how I've had it for a while the key here is when I have my hand on the grip I generally am you know kind of closer to the outside edge of the grip I don't ride all the way in here I can if I need to like if I really just want to aggressively pedal for a jump I'll just uh, grab in there and go but I'm not using my controls when I do that um, but for the most part I have my hands close to the outside edge right and then you'll notice my finger one finger now two fingers would mean see how I have to shift my hand over there I don't want that I want these three fingers gripping right I want this finger to either grip or have control of the lever so this is a uh, thumb control and because this is Shimano I can also do this but I don't I use that finger for the brake and I do this and this as my shifting right and then one finger braking here and if I'm riding I'm doing all this nothing no part of my hand is hitting I'm not even hitting that right I'm not hitting the brake lever I got plenty of clearance I can be like doing all this and that's what I want I want that clearance and then I've adjusted this lever in a little closer so it, I don't have to reach as far that has to do with your finger length so people with smaller hands uh, women children and small built men <laughs> like I'm not small built but I do have shorter fingers than most men and so I bring the lever in a little bit and this will come in a lot farther so then you're not having to like twist your wrists like this. If you find yourself having to do this to reach your brakes, you need to get the lever adjusted. And if your brake doesn't have the ability to adjust the lever closer, then you need to get updated brakes or something. Cause this is really not a good way to be trying to ride. Anytime you have to stop, you have to risk how much grip you have on your handlebars. And if you're going over bumps, your hand could come off. Yeah, it's actually kind of dangerous. So <laughs> you want really good control. So probably on the safety factor, gears aren't so much a big deal because they you're just shifting. That's for ease of pedaling, whatever. But when it comes to braking, it's really important that you have really easy quick access to that lever I can be riding along no panic right the, the other thing and again pan speaking of panic is if you do do two fingers you will tend to over brake and that can cause problems especially on the front brake if you grab it too much you're gonna lock up your front wheel and potentially send yourself over the handlebars one finger braking gives you that light modulated control and you don't ever want to just grab the brakes really hard in a panic that is like a bad bad thing and we'll talk about that in other videos about braking right so that is probably something a lot of people overlook is the position of their levers and their shifters and if you look my dropper lever is right there I actually feel like now that I'm playing around with it I could probably rotate this back a little bit I know I just did that on my other bike to get it so I engage it much sooner and, and control it right so I mean I can make minor improvements on the, this just the way that I'm thinking about it right now right so let's get into more on the fit side of your controls and one of the biggest things is handlebar width and a lot of people don't understand what how wide they're handlebars should be and there's sweep which is how far back your handlebars come back so there's really flat bars and there's really sweepy bars and then you know we're not going to talk so much about rise because we already covered that when I talked about reach and effective top tube and kind of general bike fit um, especially um, sometimes I just a stack <laughs> sometimes my brain just fails me stack height all has to do with how high you want this to be but let's talk more about how wide it should be and how much sweep you should have okay so let's talk about handlebar width um, I'm seated pedaling along yeah okay so if you look at kind of this 
you can call it a Y or a V. I like how I hit my mic with my finger. Speaking of mic, somebody actually commented saying I should use a wireless mic, and I have one, <laughs> but I bought it so I could use it outdoors, and I never really thought, well, I should use it indoors, then I don't have to shout, and it'll be easier to understand and clear. So, trying it out. Anyway, that was a little diversion from the task at hand here. So, handlebar width, you'll kind of notice this V shape, right? And, you know, you've got, do you need to be way out here, here, you need to be way in here. Like, like what is handlebar width? So we're not going to get into how you measure and how you figure that out. Um, this uh, bike setup uh, video series is more about what different things, changes to your bike affect how it rides, right? So we're going to talk about narrow bars. So narrow bars bring you in closer. They bring your shoulders in. And notice how my shoulders come in like that, right? So we, a long time ago, in the old school XC days, we were thinking more like road bikers and we're like, we want these narrow bars, we wanna go fast, we want here, we'd have bar ends, we'd get out here, it's all the rage, and, the, and we wanna be able to squeeze between trees, things like that, right? Like get narrow. Well, what we've learned over the years is by going wider, we have more control because when you're in here in this narrow position, you don't have a lot of leverage, you don't have a lot of control. So like little things that happen to your front wheel don't, you know, you don't have enough leverage to overcompensate for what happens. So you lose control of your bike and then it makes your steering feel like everything's really quick and uh, finite because your lever is only this long. So little movements make a bigger difference to the front wheel. As you get out wider, you have to move the handlebar much further to affect the front wheel, which actually gives you more leverage and more finite control of your steering. So that's really the, in a nutshell, as you go wider, you gain more control over the bike. And that's what we've learned over the years. And that's why more so recently, handlebars have started getting much wider, right? But there is a point where they start to get too wide. And what happens when handlebars get too wide is you not only is this just not all that comfortable what happens is you lose this control right so the ability to pull up the bike and push the bike forward um earlier in this video i called the handlebars yoke right which is kind of funny but um and i'll talk about this in another video but i just want to touch on the point now an airplane, when you need to go up with the airplane, you pull back on the yoke. When you need to nose down on the airplane, you push forward on the yoke. Bicycle is the same way. When you want to go up, say you're going off a jump, you want to pull back on the handlebars. When you want to nose the bike down, you want to push forward on the handlebars. Very interesting, the correlation there of how an airplane works and how you pitch a bicycle. Pitch control, I call it. So, here we are. Handlebar width, you start getting too wide, you lose this control. And width of your handlebars is going to be based on your body type. I have pretty wide shoulders, so I can get away with wider bars. But take somebody with a smaller build, right? And then they're reaching out to these bars. You know, I can't even mimic a smaller build. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Uh, okay. As you can see, if you have sh narrower shoulders, now the arm is gonna have to go out more to get this handlebar. So that's when somebody might wanna cut bars down a little bit, right? And I say a little bit, <laughs> we're talking, you know, if you cut, here's another thing about handlebars. If you cut a quarter inch off, that's half an inch overall. So you're bringing both sides in. If you cut a half inch off on the end, you're cutting an inch off the bar. So keep that in mind. Uh, you probably want to cut at eighths or quarters of an inch at a time to figure out a bar because you don't want to ruin your bar. So if they feel too wide to you and you want to try a narrower, start with a quarter inch on each side. That's half an inch overall. Then try it out see what you think 
And if you still feel like you can tweak it a little bit, do a quarter inch more. Don't go lopping half an inch off. That's way too much because that's an inch total. And if you lop an inch off of each side, that's two inches total. That's a lot of handlebar <laughs> getting cut off because you got to remember you're cutting on both sides, not just one side, right? So just remember that if you ever do make those adjustments, a lot of nice handlebars have slash marks on there which is nice so you can see where you want to cut it uh, bars are generally measured in millimeters um, i'm used to the inch game just because i'm american and uh, bmx we go by inches things like that um, 800 millimeters is kind of normal. So I see 760 to 800 millimeters is kind of normal. I've even seen some bars over 800 millimeters. 800 millimeters is pretty wide, right? Um, and then I've uh, had um, in the BMX world, 28, 29 inch. 29 is kind of the, the widest. I have seen some 30, but um, BMX racing regulations 29 is the maximum you can have and the reason for that is because you're up against other riders right next to you in the starting gate and stuff so um, 29 is kind of what I get used to on a BMX bike um, mountain bike I generally like 30 or so and uh, my low side has like 31 I did cut them a little bit they came with 32 they're really wide so the bar width is just it's kind of a, a crazy game of figuring out what works for you and I'll put a couple of videos in the description to explain kind of how you can do bar width in case you're curious now um, and I will do a video um, in the future I'm gonna do it about all of this stuff about how do you actually size your bike to you right uh, most of this is how does the bike behave based on the different things that you do to it all right so wider bars they're gonna give you more control you only have to move them a little bit I mean you have to move them a lot to do steering which is a good thing because then you have that finite control if you're narrow and you move that same amount of distance, you're gonna turn your wheel a lot farther. This is all geometry, if you understand geometry, is when you got shorter levers, that movement is smaller, but it creates a greater effect. And as you get out farther, that movement is bigger, creates less of an effect, but it gives you easier, more power, more control, right? Cool, let's talk about this here which is the sweep and then we will conclude this video okay so now we have this part right how much sweep should you have do you want a really flat bar or a sweep bar well that's actually a much easier thing to figure out that you might know if you put your arms out like this at the width of your bars and you just naturally look at the alignment of your hands then you want your bars to most closely line up with that um, if you put your arms out and your hands are more like this then you want a bar with more sweep if your hands are almost flat, like mine are more flat, so I generally like a flatter bar, and most bars actually have more sweep than I like, and I've just gotten used to it, but ideally, I prefer a much flatter bar because I feel like I have to turn my elbows and my wrists in. Again, when you do that, do make sure you do have your elbows kind of down and not out like this see how i block the camera because i got my elbows out to the side <laughs> make sure you have your elbows relaxed and down and not pushed out to the sides so relax and down and grab your grips lightly don't grab them really tight and just kind of see how your hands feel if you feel like they're getting they're wanting to turn like this then you need a flatter bar if you feel like you're too rotated like this and you'd rather be rotated like that let's angle for the camera a little better right then you want a bar with more sweep don't listen to all these so-called experts out there that say uh, more sweep is better for this and that and whatever how your handlebar sweep is has to do with your body build 
100%. So when you get these people that sit there and argue that more sweep is better, that isn't necessarily true for everybody. Maybe for them it is because they tend to have their elbows way in and their bar and their narrower build or whatever. But if you're a wider build like me, your elbows tend to naturally come out a little more. That outer part of my hand is going to rotate and it has to do with my build. So I can't stand bars that have a lot of sweep. Like they're really hard for me to ride. They feel awkward. I don't have the control, things like that. Um, I generally think flatter bars are actually better for mountain biking for most people. Um, and that's my opinion. But basically, hold your arms out, handlebar width, relax elbows and shoulders, and just see where your hands naturally line up see how mine are very very only very slightly rotated back versus some people might have a narrower more elbows in whatever right so that's that sweep is an important thing for your overall comfort so getting really personalized with your handlebar setup and your cockpit is actually a thing when you go buy a new bike from a bike shop it's likely not going to come set up or in the best uh, position for you and you probably won't have the proper bars even they you know manufacturers have to pick kind of the best case scenario for the most common body type and rider and for the size of the bike but you may not match those specs exactly so yeah this stuff matters so there you have it those are the controls all about the controls and Hopefully you find this video helpful. Um, don't underestimate the importance of this. What you do here is going to have a lot to do with how much control you have over your bike and your comfort level also and your ability to brake, shift, and all of that as well as have the ability to move your hands around and, and control the bike without that stuff interfering. So all of that's really important and i hope that you learned something from this video and find this stuff helpful if you do please like and subscribe i really appreciate your support for my channel peace